Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Neurosci IQ. In this episode, we are going to talk about the drug Aptal. And as you might have heard recently, this drug passed the phase one clinical trials and a lot of scientists are hopeful that this drug can be used to treat stroke patients in the future. So let's get started. In this presentation, we will first cover what even is a stroke in case you don't know what a stroke is. Then we will talk about the significant role of inflammation in the brain and the damage it can do to brain tissue after a stroke. Then we will talk about Aptal and how it can actually potentially help treat a stroke patients and reduce brain damage and their symptoms after the stroke. Lastly, we will just cover some general guidelines or directions that we might be headed in the future. So what are the two main types of strokes? In general, a, a stroke is an event in the brain that either results from a blockage in one of the blood vessels in your brain or alternatively, it is an event that that is caused by a rupture in one of your brain blood vessels. So the first type is called the hemorrhagic stroke, which is basically when the blood vessels in your brain rupture and blood just starts pouring out. This stroke is less common or less frequently observed in stroke patients. The second type of stroke, which is called the ischemic stroke, it is more common than hemorrhagic and it accounts for almost 90% of all stroke cases. It is basically when a blockage in one of your blood vessels prevents the normal flow of blood. So now that we know what a, a stroke is, we can move on. But before moving on, as always, this is just for entertainment purposes only. And this video is not intended as medical advice. And please see your physician if you have any questions about any medical topics. So now let's talk about the role of inflammation and the brain. While sometimes inflammation can be good and it can help your immune system fight off diseases, in the case of a stroke, some of the inflammation is unnecessary. And when you get like a stroke, there is a lot of danger molecules or also called damps that, that basically activate the inflammation response and start activating your immune system because the immune system thinks that there is a, there maybe there is bacteria or other viruses that are invading your brain even though it's just the result of the stroke causing your brain cells to die and sometimes this inflammation can be very bad for you and it can be become chronic which means it goes on for a prolonged period of time. And if you look at the diagram on the left, what happens is we have the inflammatory stimulus. It can be, for example, dead tissue or dead neurons can secrete chemicals that activate your microglia, which are a type of immune cell in the brain. And these microglia start activating other parts of the immune system by releasing inflammatory cytokines which which activate the other parts of the immune system and this results in a lot of inflammation which can lead to a loss of neurons and other cells in the brain and when these neurons and other tissues start dying they further increase the inflammation response because it acts as a positive feedback loop. So the inflammation becomes chronic when the neurons and other tissue die. So the signal keeps on getting stronger and stronger and it all starts over again. So we definitely don't want chronic brain inflammation as it can lead to a lot of 
a lot of pathologies in the brain in, in the future, but also can result in a lot of neurons and other tissue types dying. If you look at the right side of the diagram, that is an overview of a, poten a potential method that the immune system or the inflammation response is activated and prolonged. We have, for example, the toll-like receptors in number four, for example, and when the ligand, which can be a danger-associated molecule, binds to the TLRs, it induces a signal and the cell eventually starts making these pro-inflammatory cytokines and these cytokines uh, help induce inflammation and keep the inflammation going. So now that we know the role of inflammation and how it can be chronic and cause mm, some health problems in the brain, and we should avoid excessive inflammation, we can go to the next step. So as you might have wondered, basically the goal of scientists in the stroke is to avoid chronic inflammation in patients so they do not lose a lot of neurons and there isn't a lot of subsequent damage after the stroke to these neurons. Because if the inflammation gets out of hand, then there is very little or it becomes a lot harder to treat. So Aptal is the new drug that everyone has been talking about and it is very exciting. First, it is an aptamer and if you don't know what that is, it is basically a single stranded DNA molecule. And this, is, this artificial molecule has specifically been shaped to do a function that scientists wanted to do. In the case of Aptal, what scientists have done is that this Aptamer is the three-dimensional shape actually allows it to bind as an antagonist. So it basically blocks the, the original ligand, which can be a damaged molecule to bind to TLR4 receptors. So if you imagine if Aptal is blocking TLR4 receptors in the brain immune system, then they cannot, the immune system cannot get very activated and the immune response doesn't get out of control. One thing that is really important to mention is that inflammation is not bad in all cases and Aptal actually works by reducing the initial inflammatory phase, which is the one that is the most destructive. And this initial inflammation phase lasts from almost immediately after the stroke to, to hours after the event. So Aptal, what it does, it actually interferes with the initial inflammation phase. And after the initial phase, it can get reduced in the body by, for example, getting excreted in the urine. And it allows the remodeling inflammation phase, which is the healthy inflammation or the one that isn't as destructive to go on and help the brain recover. And it helps the immune system to, for example, recycle any neurons or tissue that have died as the result of a stroke. So the very nice thing about Aptal is that it potentially only affects the inflammation type that we don't want, which is basically the first type, and it reduces that while it allows the good inflammation or the remodeling phase to go to proceed. If you look at the diagram, this is directly from the study that the scientists conducted. If you look, basically it shows the concentration of Aptal and on the x-axis we have the time. At first patients were injected with some concentration of Aptal and as you can see Aptal numbers progressively decreased in the body. At, at 8 hour and the 16th hour scientists injected Aptal again which you can see from the spikes that go up. And if you see 
the spikes, you can tell that after injection, the aptal numbers went up, but then they start getting progressively lower and lower and lower, which is exactly what we want. We want the aptal to block the inflammation that is initially occurring, which is very destructive, but allowing the secondary remodeling inflammatory phase to go on. And this is exactly what it, what it is showing. Aptal numbers decrease rapidly after the initial injection, which allows the secondary remodeling phase, which is useful for brain function to go on. So now let's talk about some future directions and where we might be headed. Obviously, the first step is to test this drug more by, for example, conducting phase two and phase three clinical trials. And then we can actually get more evidence or more data about the effectiveness and safety of the drug, as well as compare this drug to the effectiveness of current treatments for stroke patients and current drugs to see if Aptal is actually better than current drugs to cure a stroke or help a stroke patients. The second step is, of course, we have to research other mechanisms that could potentially alter the immune response in our favor. So it does, the immune system doesn't actively go into an uncontrollable chronic inflammation mode, which would help thousands or millions of stroke patients in the world. The last step is that actually some scientists, the aptamer treatment is very recent, a recent development, and there is only a few other drugs that have been approved for have been approved that use the aptamer technique. So if aptal actually gets approved and it's determined to be safe and Health Canada or the FDA approves the drug for use in the hospitals, then some scientists are already trying to investigate if aptal could potentially help other diseases that inflammation plays a big role. For example, if Aptal reduces inflammation effectively, then we could perhaps see some benefit in diseases such as myocardial infraction, asthma, multiple sclerosis, and among others. Thank you for listening to this episode of NeuroSciIQ. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and see you at the next one.